this is a question about stress as you can see it's also um, more than a question about stress it's a question about cones um, and you have to think quite hard about the geometry of cones which makes it a very difficult question the actual um, stress part of it is relatively straightforward so let's take a look at it and see how we get on um, I'm just going to draw a cone side on it's a very generic cone and you'll see as I hope you um, are happy with that a cone side on looks like a triangle um, and in this problem we don't have a whole cone we've got a fraction of a cone but I just want to start by looking at something about a whole cone um, which has some height h and some radius at the base r I'm going to say r um, subscript b to show that I'm talking about the radius at the base and then what I'm going to be interested in is if we come down a certain distance from the uh, top of the cone and we'll call that distance y what's the radius there and for that we use the notation r brackets y which means r is a function of y so as y changes r is going to change um, and what I'm going to do I, I promise you that this will come in useful uh, later in the question and in fact uh, this is really the thing that allows you to complete the whole question quite quickly once we've got the hang of this and I suppose I'll mark on one more thing just so we're clear uh, let's call this angle here alpha um, and of course cones can have different angles there um, I can mark two different triangles now uh, the first one has height y and radius or kind of base r of y the radius of the cone at that height y and if y is very small that's going to be a very small radius and if y goes all the way and y equals h then it's going to be this radius here r b um, so it can again that radius will change depending on what we choose for y and then there's a second triangle which is kind of like our fixed triangle our triangle we're stuck with and we know that that has dimensions that look like this uh, rb and h the total height um, now the news that, that kind of helps us here is that um, this angle is alpha and this angle is also alpha both those the red triangle and the blue triangle that I've drawn both feed off this larger triangle on the left hand side of my cone cross section um, and so they must both have that same angle and that turns out to be very important because that means these are similar triangles uh, does it mean they're similar triangles let me just check. yeah I shouldn't have doubted my terminology they are similar triangles which means they've got the same shape um, but they're different sizes and in particular what it means is the um, ratio of any t pair of sides is the same in both triangles so I mean I guess if we really wanted to to formalize it and be clear why we're saying this I could say tan alpha equals uh, tan is opposite over adjacent um, and that also equals uh, r y over y the radius at any height y divided by y opposite over adjacent and I can say for that's kind of for the red triangle so I'll give it a red star and then do a blue star for the blue triangle uh, tan alpha equals opposite over adjacent which equals uh, r b over h um, and these two things must then be equal because they're both tan alpha and that turns out to be useful because now I can say r of y divided by y equals r b divided by h and that means that 
r of y, the radius at any height y, equals rb times y over h. Um, this is useful. I'm just going to make a note of that as a kind of useful sub-conclusion. I'll underline it. Uh, this is useful because in our actual problem, I'm just going to sketch on here and then I'll come to a new page, we're kind of dealing with three different uh, cones. First of all, there's the uh, cone that's been removed that no longer exists. So you, you're told it's some kind of a pedestal made of cones. So that green zone has been removed. And then we're interested in the weight underneath or the stress underneath some other part of the cone. And in the second part, that's going to be the stress um, kind of here, um, halfway up the pedestal. I think it wants the, the stress to be calculated. Um, and so um, we're going to be interested in this volume and finally I guess we also might need to know uh, this volume and so we need to be able to calculate the volume of three cones potentially uh, the green cone uh, green plus red cone and there's going to be a green plus red plus blue uh, sorry, I know this is uh, taking a while with all the different pens, but just to be clear. And to calculate the volume of each of those three cones, we'll need um, the radius at the bottom of each of these three cones. And this function here that we've been able to determine by looking at similar triangles tells us how to get those radii. Um, so let's now draw out the problem uh, again right from the start and we'll come back and perhaps use that uh, thing we've just learned again. Um, I'll make a note up here what we learned is that the radius at any uh, height in the cone y equals rb multiplied by y over h. And we've got that ready to go. And then we're going to draw out the cone. And we're gonna, now going to be able to make a general rule for uh, calculating the um, volumes above and below any arbitrary line um, we draw. Uh, so what I'm going to do is mark on three heights, y1, y2, and h, which we know. Um, Next, I'm going to try and work out the volume of a cone in general. Um, and again, I'm going to write that as a function of the height. So Vy1 equals one third pi, this is all in the question, one third pi r squared h, which equals, now this r, that's r of y. Uh, or indeed, that's r of y1, which equals, uh, so writing it again, 1 third pi rb multiplied by y1 over h squared h. And Also confusingly, uh, sorry, this h isn't the height, the total height anymore. Um, it's one that that should really say y one, right? If we're looking for the volume of this cone here, it's one third pi uh, r at y one, 
this radius squared times the height of that cone, which is y1. So this should be y1. Um, so we've got something there. It's going to involve y1 cubed divided by h squared. It looks a little bit um, messy, but we'll come back and look at that. The volume at y2 is going to be pretty much the same thing. I'm going to write it out directly. 1 third pi rb y2 over h all squared times y2. And then um, within these things we've got 1 third pi rb squared over h squared in both terms. So the volume at um, y2 minus the volume of y1, the change in volume, is um, 1 third pi rb squared over h squared multiplied by y2 cubed minus y1 cubed. That's a rearrangement. Um, I'll say v at y2 minus v at y1. We're calling delta v. And that's the volume difference between two cones, which means it's the volume difference between this cone and this larger cone, which means it's actually this bit here. It's the equivalent of the red shaded area uh, that I drew on there. So that's why we need to know about the size of all kinds of different cones. Um, once we know the volume, we can use um, mass is rho v, and we can get the change in mass between those two bits of uh, cone is one third uh, rho pi. So I've just multiplied all of this by rho, basically rb squared over h squared multiplied by y2 cubed minus y1 cubed. Um, and then the change in weight, well weight equals mass times gravity, so delta w, which is a, um, a force, is one third rho g pi rb squared over h squared, uh, that shouldn't, that's just a scribble, uh, y2 cubed minus y1 cubed. Um, that is the weight of this uh, section here. Or alternatively, it's the weight of this red shaded area on its own, the red shaded volume on its own. Um, so first of all, we found out the volume of that red shaded bit, then we turned that into a mass, and then we turned it into a weight. So if we want to know, just going back to our um, original problem. It's kind of the weight of this bit that's been made invisible here. Um, so we've cut away the top of the cone, that's why we're not including that in the weight. Um, but this section here has some weight. And the stress at z will basically be the area um, of the cone at z. Remembering that stress is force over area, it'll be the area of the cone at z, um, the force the weight of that bit divided by the area of the cone at z. Um, so we can say then sigma at y2, move this up so it's clear, uh, the stress at y2 equals that uh, weight, which is uh, the weight of the, the semi-pedestal above, divided by the area, which is um, that weight divided by uh, pi uh, rb over h squared y2 squared. Um, the area is pi r squared, which is pi r of y2 squared, uh, which is then this. And when you calculate all of that out, um, we're going to get various things cancelling. Uh, you've got to be pretty good with your algebra here. And I work out that it comes to one third rho g 
y2 cubed minus y1 cubed all over y2 squared. So that's the stress at any height in this pedestal, depending on the height of the pedestal and the height of the um, area, the place where you're measuring that stress. Um, okay, so now we've got nearly everything that we need uh, to solve the problem. Um, I guess we've just got one more thing to think about, which is how high is the column in total, because uh, that's going to be needed in our calculations. Um, and we know that the base is uh, 0.3 in this question, and then that's the total height h, and there's another triangle that we can draw where the base is 0.2, this height is 1.6, and so this is h minus 1.6. Um, again, you can do things with ratios, but basically um, h must be 3 over 2 times h minus 1.6. When you play around with all of that, and I'll leave that as an exercise for you, you'll get h equals 4.8. Um, so in case, in, in part a, um, what we've got in this, we're interested in the stress at the bottom of the pedestal. So y2 equals 4.8. And in both our cases, y1, the height at which the ped pedestal is cut off, is going to be uh, 3.2. Uh, rho equals 2400 in the question. Uh, G equals 10. And so we can work out, uh, we've now got everything that goes in here. Sigma y2 equals 1 third 2400 10. 4.8 cubed minus 3.2 cubed over 4.8 cubed. And that, uh, if you put it into a calculator, um, 4.8 cubed minus 3.2 cubed divided by 4.8 cubed times 10 times 2400 divided by 3 is, ha, huh, that wasn't the answer I was expecting. Ah, uh, sorry, that isn't cubed, that's squared. Uh, that's where I've gone wrong. Let's try that again. 4.8 cubed minus 3.2 cubed divided by 4.8 squared times 10 times 2400 divided by 3 is 27022 uh, pascals, which is about 27 kilopascals. And uh, let's just do B, where we're interested in the stress halfway up. Um, so now, if it's uh, the pedestal looks like this, that height is 3.2, that height is 4.8, and so the height to the halfway point is going to be 4.0. It's the average of 3.2 and 4.8. Uh, so we get y2 equals 4.0, uh, y1 still equals 3.2, rho and g are as before, and the stress, stress at y2 equals one third um, 2400. Um, and um, I won't put that all the way through my calculator. I've got an answer here. I know that's going to be 15.6 kilopascals. And those are the two answers. Um, so just to be clear, um, a difficult question. It's difficult to keep your head uh, straight on the geometry. There's, there's a lot going on. Um, and I would say, 
you know, it's really a question about uh, turning things into mathematical language. The, the actual stress calculation, the only thing that we really had to do that was related to stress was this step here where we said stress is force over area. Everything else was really finding that force and finding that area. Um, so that's how you do that question.